We all know what literature is, or we think we know it by reading from famous poets such as William Shakespeare and Mutenebi or even Victor Hugo. I'm hoping I said that name correctly, but that's not the case. This very deeply constructed form of art that is not only has put into museums at this point and made it into a lot of plays, but it has been in history for many decades or even centuries going further. But there's a question that's been bugging me for a while now. Have you ever wondered why we never consider gaming as a form of literature? Before this video starts, I encourage you to grab a snack and a cup of water because you need to stay hydrated. Let's get back to the video. That's a weird question to be asked though, isn't it? As we all know, any form of story-based media is considered as literature. But that's apparently wrong. Gaming in general isn't as important and to be taken seriously as a form of storytelling or how is it looked at amongst the rest of society. It is conceived as being a child play or a useless waste of time. How can we define gaming exactly? First let's look at the definition of games. It's an activity that one engages in for amusement or fun. Which is a very shallow definition. Alternatively, we can say that it is the simulation that a console or a machine puts us into to experience these set games. These developers want us to experience the story in a different way. Literature, on the other hand, is written works, especially those considered of superior or lasting artistic merits. And merit here is the quality of being particularly good or worthy, especially so as to deserve praise or reward. Let's emphasize on worthy here. These works are also experiences that when we read, we can feel when reading it. It influences us readers just like how gaming influenced us throughout the years. We can literally see this in every game. A really good example would be how characters and events take place and how they affect us. Like even in simple games such as the original Super Mario game or the Super Mario franchise, which I'm going to be talking about later on in the video. As it mixes between the storytelling and the experience of impersonifying the character, as you can literally walk around in it, unlike the literature which is solely based on the imagination. Although there are plays that are made to reimagine those classics, but gaming gives you the freedom to roam around in that immersive world that you are imagining between these lines. We can, believe it or not, as thinkers and as humans with our given mind, to look at anything from the perspective that we want based on how we look at it. And as babies, we see the world differently as we see it now. Psychologists say that Children between the ages of 8 to 11 showed the most susceptibility to pro-social influence. We see it as we are being fed information by the society and our family or friends that are around us. And if we see gaming as a waste of time, that's all from what we have seen as in a perspective of a young mind. Making it this easy for you, just look at an open world. You are given the choice to start a story from wherever you want. That's basically life, but with unlimited choices. But with other games, they put you at the beginning with a progress to go through. No matter what you do, you have to play as they tell you. And that's how real life works. Our minds are controlled to see what the society wants us to see. As the generations go by, gaming fades away in the shadow of literature. Gaming as we know nowadays was very different than it was 30 plus years ago. Since technology wasn't so advanced, the game Pong and later on Tetris were the evolution of gaming. They even had colored Pong. That was evolutionary. There popped up the infamous company named Nintendo. In 1983, the Atari Shaw came out. Mind you, in that age, there were things coming out such as the song Every Breath We Take by the police. And that was in the era of the Cold War. And this abomination was a thing, which I love by the way. Nintendo was the hero of gaming basically. Without Nintendo, the gaming industry almost come to demise. 
we remember certain events in the literature studies academically because we felt how it was and how dramatically it affected us as human beings. Literature is considered one of the most complex forms to be studied and literally anything is considered literature. Heck, even life as we speak right now and as you watch this video is literature in itself. Because we looked at it from this point of view, we can now say that the events of anything in life is considered as literature. Even the breath you're taking right now is a literature. When someone say take out your camera and take a picture or take a video, why is that? Just for fun of it? It's because everything is content. Life is content to post. And that's why people keep saying if it's not recorded, it did not happen. Because they simply did not see it. This is the world of gaming content as literature. Games can be seen as they are not that important as literature. Literature is far more important to the history. But look at what gamers did throughout the years. They raised funds for charity over a YouTube gaming and gave us the most iconic characters to develop ourselves upon, which is very important. And I do think the playwrights did impact us as readers. And that's why I think that gaming is also considered literature in that way. So consider literature in the way that it more impacts us through the years and to us experiencers.